Welcome back. Let's continue editing our form. I'm going to add one more group. I'll call it row and column count. And let's drag a row here. We'll also drag in row count and column count. Let's change the labels. Let's actually bring in a row for the distance between cubes group as well. Now those input boxes, which should be read only, so make sure you set that property here. Notice that our form displays unit. Let's see how we can get rid of that. One way to do so is to create a text parameter. I'll call this one row underscore num. And let's create another one as well. I'll call it column underscore num. Let's write the code. Click done. Double click on cube size on the rules tab to open up our code. And let's scroll down. Go to user parameters. Let's bring in the row number. And let's bring in the column number as well. Space equals space. Back to model parameters. Row count. And for column num, space equals space. Column count. Let's click OK and go make some changes to our form. Let's go to the Forms tab, right click, Edit. Let's bring in one more group. Let's use a row also. Let's bring in the row num and column num user parameters. Now let's edit the labels for these parameters. I'll call them row and column. Let's rename our group as well. Paste here. Now let's type no units and then press tab to register. In a similar way, we can bring in parameters from the component level. Let's go to parameters. Here I'm going to insert a numeric parameter. I'll call it whole underscore diameter. One thing to remember here, if you've already got a parameter with the same name at the component level, it's a good idea to avoid this name here to prevent confusion, so we can perhaps remove the underscore to distinguish it. Click outside the field to register, and let's click Done. Back to our rule. Double-click on cube size to open it up. Now let's go to User Parameters. Double-click on Hold Diameter to bring it into the code. Space equals space. And let's copy this function here. Right-click, Copy, Right-click, and Paste. So as you can see, I have the Hold Diameter at the component level and also here at the assembly level. Let's click OK and go edit our form. Forms tab, Right-click and Edit. Let's create one more group. I'll just collapse these branches so it's a little bit easier to see here. Let's bring the whole diameter user parameter into our group as well. We'll drag this into our group. And let's change the label as well. Let's copy whole diameter and paste it as our group label. And let's type something here like cube side. Tab to register. Let's make this field read only as well. 
We change the read-only property to true. And let's click OK and run our program. Open up the form. Let's make our cube dimension 1 millimeter. Click Apply. Now watch what happens here. The hole diameter is equal to 0 0.5. Click OK. It did register here indeed. Let's change it to 10 millimeters and click Apply. Now to change the hole diameter, let's execute Hole Diameter. Click OK. And it changes. The value isn't registered here, however, so let's fix that issue. By the way, these two fields should be read only, so we'll change that as well. Let's get back to the Rules tab and open up our rule. We need to copy a line of code from cube size. OK, we've got to paste it into hole diameter. Since this is the rule that runs the hole diameter rule, let's paste it in here and click OK. OK again, and let's go edit our form. Right click and edit. Let's select this field, scroll down, and set the read only property to true. And let's click OK. Let's launch our form. Go to the red tab. Let's change the cube dimension to 20 millimeters. Apply. Another problem you may encounter is if the user enters cube dimensions bigger than the row length or the column length. To overcome this issue, you can mention it in a help file, or you can use an input box function in the if statement. Let's see what happens. We'll enter a value of 31. Click Apply. And as you see, we do have a problem. Let's go back to 20 millimeters for our cube dimension. Apply. And let's close the form. Open our rule. Let's incorporate one more if statement here. The syntax will go like this. If the red cube dimension, copy, paste, now space, greater than space, row length, and we'll copy and paste that as well. You can also incorporate into this comparison statement the distance between row parameters. It depends upon the logic you want behind the program and how complex and user-friendly the program will be. This kind of debugging to make a program more user-friendly is why you have many releases of a version of a popular software. For example, Program X version 1, version 1.1, 1.2, 1.3, and so on. OK, let's bring in the input box function. Copy and paste here. Space equals space. Input box. And let's delete this part of the code. Let's replace the default entry. For the prompt, I'll type in cube dimension bigger than. Now watch the syntax here after I type this string. Space. So double quotations, space, ampersand, space. Carriage return live feed, space, underscore, enter. Another ampersand symbol. Open and close some double quotations. And within those, I'll type row length. Please correct. 
Let's run our program and see how it works. Go to the Forms tab, launch it, and go to the Red tab. Let's make the dimension 40 millimeters, for example. Apply. And here's our program. Okay, let's make it 21 millimeters. Click OK. Let's adjust the hole diameter now. OK. So the same situation can actually occur the opposite way around when the row length is smaller than the cube dimension. You can solve this problem with another if statement, of course. As a last word, as you saw, even in such a tiny program like the one we just created, there is a lot of potential for many different errors. The solution for this, first of all, think through the logistics of your program and jot it down. Document your code thoroughly and carefully. Use nomenclature that's easy to distinguish at a glance. Create a help file if you feel it'll be useful. And test your program thoroughly by entering a number of different parameters. This concludes our exercise. We'll see you back in our next tutorial.